There are four main elements to replicating what we see in the observable world. The first is shape, then value, color, and edges. Shape is probably the most important factor for understanding what it is we're seeing. Unlike a majority of the lessons that I have here on this channel, today we won't be thinking in three dimensions like an industrial designer. Instead, I think it's best when painting to look at the world as two-dimensional shapes of light and dark. An object's silhouette is often the most telling feature for understanding it visually. In other instances, it's the shapes that surround something that indicate to us what it is. These are known as negative shapes. The light we observe in everyday life can be broken down into a scale with 10 discrete steps, with 0 being black and 10 being white. While we may describe an object as being white or black, this terminology can actually be somewhat misleading, as an object's value will vary depending on the lighting conditions. For example, when we say someone is wearing a white shirt, the shirt won't appear as a value of 10 all around, some planes will be in shadow and others in light. What we're actually referring to is the shirt's local value, which is the mean value that an object will appear in ambient lighting. The next fundamental skill in replicating the visible world is being able to control your edges. There are two main types of edges, hard and soft, and both come in varying degrees. A hard edge is a transition in value or color that is abrupt. Increasing the distance between the two values makes the edge appear harder. A soft edge is one that transitions gradually between the two values or colors. And here I'm using the eyedropper tool to gradually smooth out that transition. Lowering the distance between these two values will make the edge appear even softer. Since there's an infinite number of values, it's necessary for us to simplify our palette. Rather than trying to recreate every single value, we should only use what's essential to creating our picture. In addition to only using a handful of values, I also shift the value scale depending on the contents of the scene. If, for example, our scene is heavily in shadow, we may want to shift the values towards the lower end of the scale and use one or two light values for highlight. This will help us resolve the objects that are in shadow while creating a nice contrast to the highlight areas. The opposite is true for a very brightly lit scene. It'll help us to have several values on the lighter end of the scale so that we can distinguish different planes and shapes. Okay, so now let's put all of this into practice. So I'm starting out with a line drawing of my dark shapes and my light shapes. Again, unlike most of the tutorials that I've done so far, we're going to focus on two-dimensional shape rather than three-dimensional form. Once my line drawing is in place, I select a handful of values from my limited palette, and then I begin blocking in the shadow shapes. Since the local value of the snow is very light, the shadow is much brighter than that of the jacket and the wood. And now I'm blocking in my areas of highlight, in two values. I've blocked in the really dark areas in the second lowest value, and now I'm going to place that lowest value in the areas that are the most dark. I tend to begin a scene with most of the edges as hard edges, and then later soften them up. But most of this scene is hard edged anyway, except for a few transitions in the jacket and the snow. I make a few adjustments to the silhouettes to make sure that all the shapes are correct. And most of these techniques can be applied to traditional mediums as well. In my own experience, painting with gouache in this manner has yielded really good results. It's always best to start simple, and just like with our pen drawings, we want to have intent behind every mark that we make, rather than fumbling around until we find something that's passable. Since there's no wasted materials or drying times, it can be really easy to develop bad habits with digital painting. Sometimes it can be helpful to say out loud what you're trying to do before you make the mark. Maybe you're trying to soften an edge, or add texture to a specific area. 
Just try to stay cognizant of your intentions. As with pen drawing, confidence in your mark making will really stand out and can drastically improve the quality of your work. Alright, let's try another example of a scene that's much more heavily in shadow. We'll start once again by blocking out our shapes in a line drawing. As far as layers go, I have everything on a clipping mask above the palette layer. I have a separate layer for my line drawing, and then I place in the initial values on a layer underneath that. Once I finish this setup, then I merge the two layers and just begin painting directly over it. There's all different ways to set up your layers, and feel free to choose whatever you feel comfortable with. I personally just prefer to keep this as close to traditional as possible. I use a textured brush to try to capture that grit that's on the walls. Going back to my brief discussion about local values, if you take a look at the figure on the left's shirt, you'll notice that it appears white even though it's actually really far away from white on the value scale. The reason being is that our perception of color and value is dependent on the relationship to those around it. And now with a soft brush, I'm adding in some of those gradients and smoothing out some of the edges. These softer transitions will help it appear less graphic and more like a realistic painting. Since we're working digitally, you can actually take this to a higher finish by using some photo texture, but we'll go into that in another lecture. For now, let's move on to one more example, with a little bit more dynamic lighting. Again, the setup will be the same as the last two, blocking out the shapes of light and dark. Since I'm just replicating an image and not designing my own scene, I don't actually use a perspective grid for this. However, they can be really helpful if you're creating your own scene from imagination. Take note of how much I'm simplifying here. I'm starting out the shadow shapes with one singular value. I only move on to smaller and more specific shapes after I've placed in my largest. This step-by-step -step approach will make your job a lot easier and save you a lot of headaches. Now that I have a general placement of all my shapes, I start softening up some of those edges. Now I'm adding in some texture to demonstrate the grit of the ground floor. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit of a new direction from what I normally put out, but digital painting is something that I really want to improve on, and I think it's important for young artists to develop good habits. And especially with all the new mediums and techniques that are available, I think it's best not to shy away from them and embrace them. But if you are more interested in seeing traditional tutorials, I already have a decent bit on the channel, and I'm going to start a marker rendering series relatively soon. So thanks again guys, I'll be putting out new videos every Thursday, as well as live streaming every Friday through Sunday at 1pm Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the archive of live streams, get critiques from me, or take group lessons, you can subscribe at the Modern Day James Patreon. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and join us on our Discord server if you want to chat with other artists. Take care guys!